Hey, what's going on guys? Well today I'm going to give you a story time video on fishing. My history of fishing, uh, as well as a detailed story of my recent adventure catching that big bass. So, we got to start this story out when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, I fished all the time. All the time. Um, especially, you know, during the summertime, obviously me and my friends, there's nothing to do. What do you do? You go fishing. You went fishing out in the boat quite a bit as a kid. Um, the majority of the fish that I've always fished for have been bass, largemouth bass. That's what I'm fishing for. In the process of trying to catch a, uh, a huge trophy bass, I've caught thousands of little bluegill. You know, I've caught a couple catfish in my day. Uh, I've caught um, at least one carp that I remember. It wasn't a monster, but it was a big fish. I thought it was my, my trophy bass, but it turned out to just be a carp. Um, and I've caught a, uh, a pike, northeastern pike before, which was uh, crazy because they, they like to swallow those lures, and that was uh, very tough dealing with that. But, um, yeah, the, the vast majority of my, my fishing experience have just been bluegill and some smaller largemouth bass. I've never fished on the ocean, never did any kind of deep sea fishing or anything like that, only fished on uh, freshwater. And the vast majority of my fishing have been on uh, my grandfather's pond. I fished growing up mostly, um, I had a big lake, Pinecliff Lake in uh, West Milford, New Jersey, was uh, a lot of my youth fishing. But uh, in my adult years, it's always been, you know, when I go to my parents' house and I get to see them and hang out, occasionally I'll fish. However, this year, I wanted to get serious about fishing. You know, I was always like, oh, you know, take the pole out, enjoy some time. You know, it's nice and quiet. I, what I love about fishing most, which a lot of people do, is just quiet time. That's all. You're not talking. You're not, um, you know, planning your next purchase on something. You're not worrying about bills. You're not thinking about your problems. You're just sitting around fishing. You know, it's a lot of uh, dead space, a lot of soul searching, uh, and uh, it's peaceful. It really is. It's just very peaceful to just sit and fish in the quiet. I hear the birds chirping. You know, every now and then you get a little action. It's exciting. It's fun. Um, a lot of people ask me if I eat fish. No. Uh, oh, well, I do. I love eating fish. I actually love seafood as an adult. When I was a kid, I hated seafood. As an adult, uh, I'm a big fan. And I do eat a lot of fish. But I am uh, pretty much a catch and release kind of guy. When I'm fishing, I'm not fishing for my dinner. I am fishing for sport, which some people don't like. It is what it is, but I'm looking to get that big old bass. And when I do fish, I'm, I, I, be, I try to be very respectful to the fish. I, I don't harm them purposely at all. Uh, knock on wood, you know, to date in the last like 10 years, I haven't killed a single fish that I caught. You know, so it's not like I don't know how to take the hook out or I have a problem or I'm keeping them out of the water too long or anything like that. You know, I'm very respectful of the fish. And again, some people, they, they still don't think that's right and that's fine. You're allowed to have your own opinion. Um, but I catch them and I release them. You know, no harm done. But, of course, when you go fishing, that's a responsibility that you have, is the understanding that you may, you know, kill a fish on accident. It's just inevitable. If you fish a lot, inevitably that will eventually happen. But luckily it hasn't happened, in, at least in a very, very, very long time. When I was a kid, I might have, you know, killed a few fish here and there, just because, again, I was fishing by myself, and, you know, the, the lure got too deep, or whatever the, the situation was, um, and I just couldn't get it out. Uh, and those were little sad moments, you know, and I felt really bad about that, but it just kind of comes to the territory. So, anyway, um, I wanted to get serious about fishing. You know, every time I went to see my grandfather when he was alive, um, almost every time we talked about fishing, you know. He had a couple trophy bass on the wall. He has five that he had um, mounted. Um, and it's the old school taxidermy where they use the actual skin and stuff. And that's something else I'll, I'll touch upon later in this video is taxidermy and, and mounting fish. Because uh, something I didn't know is that a lot of people do replicas. They take lots of pictures and measurements, and then people make a completely fake fish, and you can release your big one, and, and that's it. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, um, yeah, he had these monster fish. Uh, he's got five of them. The smallest one is probably maybe six or seven pounds, and the largest one is 11 pounds, six ounces, which is a beast. Um, at once my grandfather caught that fish, um, he just didn't fish that much anymore. I mean, I guess my grandfather's a very kind of black and white kind of guy. It's like, okay, well, I'm not going to catch anything bigger, so what's the point? You know, maybe he went out a couple times for fun, but he wasn't seriously fishing, I don't think, for more huge bass. He met his, his personal goals with that thing. And 11 pounds, 6 ounces is actually bigger than the Pennsylvania state record uh, largemouth bass. However, you know, caught on a private pond doesn't count. 
but it is the biggest bass, you know, that I've ever seen, at least mounted, uh, or at least in person, I should say, because I, I've seen bigger bass, like, in videos and stuff like that, but anyway, um, it's always been a bucket list thing for me and my father to catch a huge bass and mount it and put it up there, you know, with, with obviously his father and my grandfather's fish. It, it means a lot. It's like a a man thing it's a family thing you know um, it's just something that we feel like we should do it's something we've always talked about for many many years uh, and that that's the trophy that's what we're going for that's what we put hundreds and hundreds of man hours of time into you know it's not just peaceful and you know relaxing whenever but we're out there it's competitive you know so I remember as a kid I always said yeah one day grandpa I'll, I'll get that on the wall same thing with my father every time I went fishing he's like you know bring bring that big one back and it's just something we talked about literally my whole life <laughs> so it's a personal goal of mine to catch a huge bass and mount it and put it on that wall along with my grandfather's. And I think it would be something my grandfather would be very proud of, you know, my father would be very proud, and it's something that I'd be very proud of myself. So, yeah, th just recently, uh, you know, this summer I just I wanted to get more serious about fishing and really learn what to do. Because although I've been fishing, you know, for, what, 25 years now, more, you know, almost 30 years, uh, it's a casual fishing. Everything I know about fishing I just learned from my, my father, basically, because my grandfather didn't talk about it. No, 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 no. My grandfather was very hush-hush. Uh, to this day, we don't know uh, if he was in the boat when he caught those bass, if he was on shore. We, he would never divulge what lures he was using or what time he fished or anything like that. My dad would ask him, like, hey, you know, that big guy up there, what'd you use for that? And he'd be like, nope, you gotta put in the work, man. My grandfather was <laughs> very, very secretive of his uh, his little fishing tips and, and he just he never talked about it. He talked about the fish, hey, you know, he'd say, I got a big one, I got a few big ones, go out, go fishing, you know, have fun, bring back a big one. But he would never uh, you know give up the ghost on, on what he used or, or any of his techniques or anything like that. So I mean my father, pretty good fisherman, catches decent sized bass all the time, you know, like I said, yet to get that big trophy bass. And he always gave me uh, little tips here and there, and, and they're good tips, you know, when to go out and, and what to use at certain times and if the water's clear or not, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, but I kind of loosely take his advice, you know. It was only recently that I, I really wanted to get serious. I'm getting older, and I'm thinking, like, you know what? I want to catch that trophy bass. I want to do it. I want to get one on the wall. So I went up to uh, visit my, uh, my parents recently with my, my wife, and uh, occasionally we'll get, you know, a little bit of time. We'll go stay the night and then come back home. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to go fishing nice and early, and uh, I'm going to bring the GoPro, because getting into fishing more and more, or having more of a, uh, an interest in being a serious fisherman, and really, you know, trying to catch those big fish, I don't want to waste my time catching little fish anymore. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's fun when you're a kid and stuff, but as an adult, I don't want a chance hurting these smaller fish, I just want to let them be, and if something bites my hook, I want it to be big. You know what I'm saying? So, fishing big lures. Um, you know, doing these different techniques to try to avoid catching anything small. And uh, so far it's been working. And a lot of things I read, you know, when you're fishing for big fish, you know, don't expect to get a fish every time, obviously. Don't expect, expect to even get a bite. You can go out there for three, four hours and nothing happens, you know, but that's okay. It's all about patience. That's what, you know, fishing in general is about patience, obviously. You know, if you don't have patience, you probably don't fish, or at least you don't enjoy it. Um, but this particular time, uh, I wanted to get serious about it, and I hopped on Instagram, and I posted a thing talking about bait casters because I started watching bass fishing videos, and I'm thinking, like, they're using a different kind of reel. My whole life, I've used spin cast reels. I didn't even know what a bait caster was until recently. And I'm like, wow, it's a different reel, and they're using it different. I'm like, I got to learn about this, right? So I learned all about bait casting reels, and, and I'm like, I got to get one. But I didn't have any money to buy one right away, so I said, you know what, I got some, some gear and stuff, I'll trade. So I, I posted some things um, that I was offering to, uh, to trade, or said that I had interest, you know. I had three completely different people offer me the exact same setup, which is the Abu Garcia uh, Black Max, um, which is just kind of an entry level, you know, reel and uh, rod combo. And I think they sell for like as cheap as 50 and as expensive as like 80 or something, so it's pretty affordable, under 100 bucks. Um, and I was really excited about it. Three separate people I traded stuff for. So I have three of those <laughs> combos. One for me, one for my wife, because my wife's getting into to fishing now, which is pretty cool. Um, she just enjoys fishing. She's not trying to get the trophy fish like I am. You know, I, I have some pride behind this. I have a long history of trying to get this, uh, the big one, you know, the big one. 
Um, she just enjoys fishing. It's fun to her. She doesn't care what she catches. Uh, and same thing with my mother. My, my father's got my mother into uh, fishing more often now. But anyway, um, so yeah, I got a, a setup for me, a setup for my wife, and, and a spare for parts and or if my dad wants to check it out. Because again, my dad just does spin cast um, fishing like I've always done. So I brought the GoPro. I got a burly. And uh, I brought the GoPro with me because I figured I would get it on film because watching all these videos, a lot of people say, you know, when you use a, a big cast reel for the first time, you get a lot of those, um, you know, bird's nests, you know, the line kicks back. Um, and that's something that's very frustrating, and that's why some people don't stick with that. They'll go back to the spin cast. Uh, so I figured, you know what, I I'm probably going to mess up quite a bit. It'd be funny to get it on camera. Plus, you know, people always ask for more fishing videos. So I said, all right, I'll bring the GoPro. So we went, we stayed the night. Um... We ended up, God, I was talking with my father for a long time. We went to bed at like maybe 1.30 or 2 in the morning. So I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to get up. <laughs> it's 2 in the morning, I'm going to bed. But I set an alarm. I set an alarm for 6 a.m. Just thinking, you know, being uh, optimistic that like I'll get up. Alarm goes off at 6 a.m. And something in me just said, all right, get up. Just do it, you know. Because when I do go fishing, most times I'm fishing, I'm fishing either around noon or I'm fishing like right at dusk. You know, I, I rarely get up super early to go fishing. If I'm up early, I'm doing other things. You know, either have my, my uh, parents doing something or I'm up with Christina, you know, making breakfast or whatever. You know, I, I like doing uh, lots of different things up there. I'll go, you know, berry picking, I'll watch the birds, just a lot of calming country type stuff, you know. But I do rarely get up, you know, super early and get in the water and do some fishing. So I thought, you know what, let me just do it. So I got up and most of my fishing is actually from the shoreline. And I have a couple spots on the pond that, that I've had good luck with that I kind of stick with. And I, I've had a routine, basically. In some of my videos, you can see there's a duck house and an outlet where the water runs off because the pond's naturally uh, spring-fed, and it runs off and actually builds into a, uh, a little stream that's up the road and that goes into a river and so forth. So it, it's producing water for, you know, another stream that's in town. But um, there's an outlet over there, and that's my favorite spot. My favorite spot has always been there's a massive blueberry bush, which I did a video picking blueberries. It's huge, but it hangs over the water a good, you know, seven, eight feet or whatever, and it's a nice little nook, which I know there's big bass in there, or at least there was at some point. So uh, that's always been my favorite spot. And I would say maybe, I think it was a year or two ago, I posted a video catching what was my biggest bass, which looking back now, it was probably at best, five pounds maybe it was probably between four and five pounds but remember this is i've never caught a large mouth that big before it's always been little one or two pounders so this to me was a beast so i took it out of the water i got you know a nice video of it got some pictures and i released it i thought i knew it wasn't big enough to mount or anything but i thought oh it was a good good start but i was very excited about it so i got some pictures and like i said did a video i don't know if it's still on youtube i never delete anything but sometimes old videos get deleted for whatever reason but um that video may you know still be up so I, uh, you know, saved the pictures and uh, got the juices flowing. But I caught that bass underneath that blueberry bush. So ever since then, I've been really focused on, all right, well, I put this guy back. It's only going to get bigger with time. I'm going to get a fish. I'm going to catch it again. I'm going to catch it again later when it's bigger. So that's kind of been my spot, right? So at this point, 6 in the morning, I wake up, go to the bathroom, make a cup of coffee real quick. Um, and halfway through my cup of coffee... I look out in the water, I'm looking outside, everyone's dead asleep. Uh, my parent, Both my parents are home and my wife's you know, home in the uh, other bedroom and they're all sleeping. And I'm looking out and Gus is staring at me because he, he's up. It, my parents have uh, two dogs and they sleep you know, in the bedroom with them and Gus sleeps on the couch in the living room. It's like his little throne, you know, it's my, where my father sits and he loves going up there at night and going to sleep. So I wake up, like I said, bathroom, coffee, Gus is looking at me like, all right, let me out, I gotta pee. So I let Gus out. I'm having my coffee and I'm looking out in the pond and it, you know the sun is not quite out yet and it's uh, it's real dark and super misty. I mean there was so much mist on the water and fog and stuff and it was, just, it was so beautiful. And I thought all right well I'm gonna take the boat out and uh, I'm gonna go fish. I'm gonna bring the GoPro in case I screw up so everyone can laugh at me with all these bird nests and, and whatever it's called. I forget what the official name for bird nests is on a big cast. And I know you guys are gonna write down down below. Uh, backlash? I think backlash. Throwback? Backlash? Something like that. Anyway, basically, it's when you're not fishing it right, and it throws a bunch. The reel keeps spinning, you know, so it throws all the line out, makes a huge mess, and, you know, obviously you get tangled and stuff. Um, luckily, I uh, I got used to it really quickly. 
the um, the bait cast, uh, the whole system. I, I watched a lot of videos on it. I knew what to stay away from, what to watch out for. You know, feathering the line properly and and you know setting the brakes proper and all that stuff. So I did pretty good. The only thing is when I did some overhand uh, casting, there was two or three times I didn't catch it on video. This was later in the day, but. Um, Side casting was fine, but when I overhand cast, I was bringing it back too hard, and I was trying to cast too hard, and it would shoot right in the water. And as soon as it broke the surface of the water, it would, it would, you know, throw all that line up at me. Um, but, but it was okay. I, and I'm not getting too tangled. So anyway, Gus is done going to the bathroom. He's inside. I go out quietly, very quietly, grab my gear. I grab the fishing net. I grab my tackle box. I grab my new pole and reel. Um, grab my GoPro. Turn it on. Went down the boat. Grab the oars, you know, and uh, very quietly, because I've learned that, you know, if you're going to catch a big one, you can't spook them. You have to be super cool and super quiet. And as most people say, when they go fishing with someone else, a lot of times they don't catch those big ones, because when you're with someone else, you tend to talk to them, especially if you're in a boat. I've gone out countless times with my father in the boat, and we've never caught a big one, because guess what? We're banging stuff around the boat on accident and talking and jabbering, and, you know, it just spooks them off. So anyway, so I, I slide out into the fog and the mist, right? It's but early. My eyes are all glazed over. I'm not even really awake yet. Didn't even finish my coffee. I uh, didn't eat anything, just just went out. Because I, I wanted to fish while I was nice and quiet and as the sun rose, you know, I thought it'd be beautiful. And as you can see in the video, the sun's just starting. Once I turned the, the GoPro on, because I had it on for a while, but the footage of me actually catching the fish was probably I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes into actually fishing. The first half hour or 40 minutes or so, I caught three or four uh, smaller bass, you know, just the usual fare for me. But again, just stayed super, super quiet, you know. And when I turned the, uh, or the footage you guys saw uh, of the GoPro going, you could see the, the sun peeking through the trees, just starting to rise. Uh, some of the fog and mist is kind of dissipating so you can get a little bit more visibility, you know, towards the bank. And there was a tree that was in the water on the opposite side of the pond where that blueberry bush is. And it fell in the tree, or the tree fell in the water. It was probably maybe a three or four inch in diameter tree. Fell in the water uh, because we had uh, some beaver problems and the beavers were chopping everything down, trying to build a dam in the outlet. And I knew that this tree being in the water and, and kind of being fresh in the water, it's only been sitting there maybe, I don't know, three, four weeks or something, uh, that it would be a good spot for a bass. Maybe not the big one, but something was, you know, using that cover, I'm sure. So, saw the tree sitting there. I was fishing by the tree for a little bit, right? Just using that little worm. Which, by the way, thank you so much for everyone who fishes, who gives me advice. Some people say, hey, leave him alone. He'll fish how he wants to fish. I'm trying to be serious about fishing, so I'm very open to criticism and learning. For example, I got some feedback on how to use the bait caster. Like, I wasn't really holding it where most people hold it. It was comfortable for me. I could still continue to fish like that, but the next time I go out, I'm going to cup the reel a little bit better. Just people say it's more comfortable, a little bit more control. So I'll take that criticism and I'll use it. You know, thank you for that. Also, the other thing is um, setting the hook. You can see in the video that, I, I mean, I caught him, sure, but I didn't set the hook. And that's something I always forget. I know that you're supposed to set the hook. And if you don't fish, basically, once you feel a bite, once you know that your lure and hook is inside that fish's mouth, you give it a quick little jerk to set the hook to actually get it in the lips. So this way, the fish doesn't swallow it deeper and, and you know, create some problems. Uh, and also, so obviously you get a good hook on the fish so you can reel it in. So that is another mistake that I, I made in the video. But, uh, and, and fishing in general, but I'm going to be more aware of now because of the comments. So I do appreciate the criticism. Um, so I'm fishing, I'm, I'm throwing it, and I threw it in right by the bank. And it's maybe like a foot of water there. And I let it sink down the bottom, you know, rubber worm. And it gave it a little jerk, a little tug to give it a little action in the water, make it look alive. Reeled it in just a little bit. Another jerk, right? Reeled in a little bit. And I felt something go for it. And when it when it bit, it struck big. Like I just felt something big take it. When I first felt the bite, I didn't know it was a bite. I actually thought I was snagged on a tree because it hit so hard. I'm like, oh, damn, I'm snagged. Literally as I'm thinking, oh no, I'm snagged on a branch, it pulled on me. And I'm like, oh no, this is something big. So as I'm, I, it's now hooked now, you know, and I'm starting to reel it in. And I didn't really know how big the fish was until it, it jumped. And you can see, or maybe, I think you can see it, at least you can hear it in the video. But it, it jumped out of the water and I'm like, 
that's a big fish because I'm used to smaller bass jumping all the time. And I just, I, I knew the difference right away. So I got really excited. My heart was pumping. I'm like, holy crap, are you kidding me? I'm going to get a big one. You know, this is uh, a long time coming. <laughs> so I'm reeling it in. As it's getting closer to the boat, um, it starts to go for cover underneath the boat. And you can see the tip of the pole, you know, it's bent all the way down. It's under the, I'm like, oh, now it's under the boat. And I'm, the whole time I'm fighting this fish, I'm thinking I'm going to lose him. It's going to unhook and it's going to be another fishing story, right? And everyone's got a fishing story where the big one got away, right? They don't mean crap. You need some proof. You need some pictures. So um, <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm going to lose them. So I got so excited. I brought the net out, right? And the net is to support the weight of the bass, especially, you know, when you're pulling it out of the water. Because, you know, the weight's supported while they're in the water. But once you take them out, all that stress is on the line. And, you know, obviously you can snap your line. In this particular case, I was fishing with 15-pound test, so it probably wouldn't have snapped anyway, but it's just not protocol. It's not what you do. Either you grab with the net or you reach in there and you grab the jaw, you know, to support that weight. But I was too excited for that. <laughs> I, I wanted that fish, so I lifted them right out of the water, which I'm sure real bass fishermen, real serious fishermen are just going, oh, my God, man. Keep your cool. What are you doing? And it's funny. Someone commented, too, because eventually I landed in the net. So I... I you know, picked it right out of the water, put it down in the boat. I was so excited. I placed it in the net in the boat, which didn't make a difference at all. Served no purpose whatsoever. Um, and then, I, of course, got a hold of them and, and really got a good look at them. And I thought, wow, this thing's a beast. This thing is eight, nine pounds. I'm going to mount it on the wall. My grandfather would be so proud of me if he was alive. My father's going to be really proud of me. And then I'm looking at it. Right? I'm, I'm very excited. I'm thinking, I don't know how this actually compares with the other bass on the wall. I know it's smaller than some of the bass that are hanging up on the wall already. I'm like, oh, damn. So I shut the camera off. I, I, re I rode in, and I ran, because uh, there's a huge hill from the pond, obviously, to the house. The house isn't right there. So I ran as fast as I possibly could with this bass in my hand. Boat half in the water, all my gear, you know, sitting there. Ran up the hill, ran inside. And the first thing I did when I got inside holding this bat, and Gus is looking at me, Gus is like, hmm? he cocks his head to the side, goes, whoa, what's that? What, what is that? I got this massive bass, and I'm holding it up against the, the fish on the wall, you know, because I'm trying to see, is this mountable? Is this, and is this a laughable small bass? It's just exciting for me, you know, so I'm holding it up, and it's bigger than the smallest one on there, but still smaller than the other uh, four of them. So I'm like, oh, damn, I don't know. Because when I first caught it, I'm like, this is the, you know, it's the biggest bass I ever caught. And, you know, as you guys know, it ended up weighing about six pounds. And, uh, yeah, in some states, that's a keeper. Uh, but for a lot of people, it's not. It's something you throw back, wait till it gets a little bigger. All I need is a picture of it, right? So um, I knocked on my, my parents' door, right? Woke them up. My mom actually answered the door. And she's just like, one eye cracked open. She's like, oh, everything all right? Because <laughs> I'm knocking on the door. At this point, it was probably 10 to 7, you know, in the morning. And uh, I hold, held the fish up. She goes, oh, my God. So she's like, hang on. So my dad's like, oh, his eye, eye barely cracked open, you know, half covered. I'm like, Dad, check it out. I got a big one. And he's like, holy crap. And uh, everyone's excited. And then, of course, they're yelling. So then Christina wakes up. I, I, you know, I hear her come out of the bedroom and I hold it up. She's like, oh my gosh. So everyone's all like happy for me because they know how badly I really want to catch a big fish. You know, I, I want that trophy bass. So we're all talking about it for like a good maybe two, three minutes, right? I said, I, my dad says, well, how much do you think it weighs? And I said, I don't know. I, I you know, I got, I got to weigh it. All right, sorry about that. A bunch of kids walking by. Gus started barking. So anyway, um, so I'm in the house. Everyone's excited about the fish and everything, right? I grabbed the bathroom scale, bring the bathroom scale out, and I got on the scale without the fish, and then got back on it with the fish. Now when I did this, like I said, it was about six pounds. I did it two or three times. It was like five eight, six one, five four. So it's a it was around maybe high fives, low sixes, something like that. So this scale that I'm using uh, has been on the fritz lately. In fact, my dad makes jokes that the scale is not accurate. That one day you know steps on and he lost 20 pounds overnight because the batteries are dying in the scale. So I know it's not like super accurate, but I still, f I, like looking back and looking at pictures and stuff and other people's back, I still feel it is around six pounds. So at this point, um, I'm really pondering whether to keep it. Like my, mind, I'm, like my mind's going a mile a minute. I'm like, 
first off, if I keep the thing, I got to come up with a couple hundred bucks to mount this thing. You know what I mean? It's not taxidermy is not cheap. And at this point, I didn't know that they do replicas. So I'm just thinking I got to give it someone. They're going to mount it for me a couple hundred bucks, uh, or I can throw it back. And I just, I just kept thinking, like, is it big enough? If I mount this thing and put it on the wall next to the other fish, is it going to be, like, teeny? Like, I only want to mount it if it's, it's really a keeper. Like, unquestionably, yes, you definitely needed to mount that fish. As a, as a sport fisherman, someone would come in and look at it and go, nice catch. Not like, I catch that all the time. So now, like, I'm really questioning myself. Is this really big enough to mount? Uh, and, and at the same time, I'm thinking, this fish has been out of water for probably five minutes already. You know, so if it's going to die, I'm, I have to mount it, right? So I looked up online real quick on my phone. At the same time, my, my wife's looking on my fo on her phone. My, my mom's looking on her phone and, like, you know, taxidermy and all this stuff. What, how do you preserve a fish for taxidermy? All this stuff. So you find out, all right, you got to wrap it up, you know, in a, a bag or a towel or something, put it in the freezer, and that's it. So I wrapped it up. I wrapped it up in a towel, put it in a bag, put it in the freezer. It's in the freezer. For probably, and, and we're talking this whole time, like, oh, you know, I got to find a good place. I don't know if they're going to do it right, blah, blah, blah. It's in the freezer for probably two minutes, and I hear it, like, flailing. Quack, 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 quack. I didn't wrap it tight enough, so it's, like, hitting the, the, you know, freezer. And now I'm feeling bad. I'm thinking, oh, my God, this thing, like, are you supposed to kill it first? Are you put it in the freezer? Like, I, I didn't know what to do. So now I'm starting to feel bad for the fish, right? And I know a lot of fishermen are going to say, yeah, fish don't have feelings, they don't have nerve endings, they don't feel it. Okay, that's fine. But something in me is thinking, this thing is slowly dying in the freezer. So I make the decision right then and there. I'm going to go grab it. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to go down to the pond. I'm going to take a real quick picture, go down the pond, and see if this thing will just survive. Because now I decided I'm not going to mount it. I'll wait until I get something bigger. But I don't want this thing to die for nothing. So I took it out of the freezer, and it's still, you know, its gills are going, its fins are moving around, you know, it, its mouth. So I'm like, I can't believe this thing's still alive. I went outside, took a real quick picture, went downstairs. And my wife took another picture while I was, um, you know, right as I got outside. So the first picture I have, uh, there's a huge sun glare behind me. It looks like you can barely see anything. Uh, but again, I was, I was rushing at this point because I didn't want this fish to die. And the other picture downstairs, I don't even know what she took. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... I have two okay pictures of me and the fish. Um, but anyway, so I ran down. I brought my cell phone. No, 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 I'm sorry. I couldn't find my cell phone. I told my wife, hey, grab my phone, grab my phone. She's like, I don't know where it is. It's like panicking. I'm like, because I'm just thinking, I want to get uh, a video of me releasing the fish to show it's okay, you know? Plus, I was thinking that maybe I would get another picture when I was down there, which I never took. I forgot to take. She can't find my phone. I'm like, oh, this fish is going to die. We're like arguing, you know. It's finally found my, my phone, throws it at me. I miss it, slams on the ground. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. Grab the phone, run down the hill, all the way down to the pond, get to the dock, turn the, my phone on, right? Put the, the fish in the water, and the fish is starting to, um, starting to move around again, but he's not like trying to get away. So I know that when they're out of water, their gills kind of stick together a little bit, you know, so it makes it a little bit harder for them to breathe. So um, when I got them back in the water, I kind of moved them around a little bit. I was still holding on to them, but I was just kind of, you know, swimming for him, essentially, moving my hand around. And the more I was doing that, the more, then he got, like, lively. You know, the fins were going a little bit more. And as soon as he gave one good, like, jerk to try to get away, I'm like, all right, cool. This fish is going to probably live now. So I took my, my phone out. Turn it sideways because you got to get that, that YouTube shot, right? You can't have all, you know, you can't have the uh, the vertical action. People make funny for that these days. <laughs> so get the horizontal, make sure everything's cool. Hit record. And then you saw the video, obviously. Hey, you know, he only weighs six pounds or around six pounds. So I'm going to let him go. And I, I let him go and he swam off. Or she, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you guys can tell from the picture or the video. But, um, yeah. And the second I let go of him... I was starting to regret it. Like, maybe I should have kept him. Maybe I should have mounted him. And my dad still thinks he's bigger than he was. I, I, do, I do feel like it was probably around six pounds. And the, and the real fisherman out there could probably tell me that just from seeing it in the video. Um, I don't have any regrets. I'm glad I let it go. It'll live another day and, and who knows, maybe get a little bigger and I'll catch him next week, next year, five years from now. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> that's my... That's my story. Um, thank God this fish died. I actually learned later 
that uh, largemouth bass can live up to 15 and 20 minutes out of water. Um, this fish was meant to live because after being ran up the hill, showed off to everyone, right, lay down a couple times, wrapped up for in his coffin, put in the freezer, God, in the freezer for at least two or three minutes, it was not meant to die. It was the Rasputin of bass. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy, though, that it did survive. If it did die, I would have mounted it, just so it wasn't a waste. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm glad, though, I made the decision to throw it back and, and that it did, you know, survive.